Welcome to another basic electronics video. Today we will take a look over the Wheatstone Bridge. How it works and why we use it. This is a very common and simple circuit based on resistance values used with sensor applications. Combine this with an operational amplifier and you will get a good sensing circuit. Before we start make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell in order to see my future projects. Also thanks to all my patrons for the support. So let's get started. This video is sponsored by GLC PCB, which upgraded their factory so now they can offer 5 pieces of common 2 layer PCBs with a production time of only 24 hours, and that without any additional fees. So for that, prototyping becomes faster than before, but for the same low price. Upload the Gerber file, select the PCB settings and order high quality PCBs for a few dollars. What's up my friends, welcome back. Ok, so what is the Wheatstone Bridge? Well, a good definition would be that it is the most common and simplest bridge network used to find resistance values. We use this configuration to detect very small resistance changes and that could be used with sensor applications. We convert resistance changes to voltage changes and that is very useful. This is the configuration of this bridge. We have 4 resistors in the shape of a diamond. We know the value of 3 resistors, but the 4th one is unknown. The supply voltage is connected to points A and B. And between points C and D we will later measure the voltage drop, so we need a voltmeter. So here is how this works. Between the points A and B, we have two voltage dividers. One divider is made by R1 and R2, and the other one is made by R3 and the unknown resistor. Using the voltage divider formula, we get that the voltage on point C is R2 divided by the sum of R1 and R2 and multiplied by the input voltage. And the voltage on point D is Rx divided by the sum of Rx and R3 and multiplied by the same input voltage. So the voltage drop between C and D is the voltage on C minus the voltage on D, and that is equal to this. But what we are looking for is a balanced bridge. And that is when the voltage between C and D is equal to zero. So if we imply that the voltage CD is equal to zero, we get that the voltage on C is equal to the voltage on D. That means that one divider is equal to the other divider value, so let's clean a little bit this equation. The V in value is on both sides, so we can delete it. Now we cross multiply and we get this. We pass all the Rx elements to one side, and we are left with this. We know that Rx R2 minus R2 Rx is equal to 0, so we get that R2 R3 is equal to Rx R1. So from this we get that the Rx is equal to R3 multiplied by the division between R2 and R1. So why is this important? Well, if R1 and R2 are a constant value, let's say 20 ohms, Rx will be equal to R3 multiplied by a constant value. So by changing the R3 value, we could get that to be equal to the Rx value. And in that way we have 0 volts between C and D. Ok, so now we know what value of resistor we should have in order to have 0 volts between point C and D. But the Rx is the unknown value. So what we do is to put R1 and R2 to a known value, but we make R3 to be variable. We change the R3 value till the voltage between C and D is zero, and that's when the bridge is balanced. But now let's give some values. On one side we have let's say two resistors of 20 ohms, and the supply is 10 volts. Using the divider formula before, we get that the voltage on C is 5 volts. We change the R3 resistance till we get 5 volts as well on point D. Ok, so now let's say that the unknown resistor is a strain measurement gauge. This gauge will increase the resistance under forces. In practice, the range of a strain gauge resistance is from 30 ohms up to 3000 ohms. For a given strain, the resistance change may only be a fraction of the full range. Therefore, to measure a fraction of resistance change with high accuracy, the Wisdom Bridge configuration is used. Right now the bridge is balanced, so we have CD equal to 0 volts. So now we apply force on the gauge, so the resistance is getting bigger. So the voltage drop on the gauge is now bigger as well. Let's say that the gauge is now 35 ohms. So the voltage on point D would now be 6.36 volts. 
so the voltage between C and D is negative 1.36 volts. So now we can measure that voltage drop. So we have passed forces measurements to very small resistance changes and then to voltage values, so we could use this into our projects, maybe connected to a microcontroller. But now you might wonder, why not use the gauge directly with the voltage divider? Well, these kind of sensors might change the resistance by other factors as well, as for example by the temperature. Let's say that we apply force on the gauge, and we measure a resistance of 20 ohms, in a room of 30 degrees. Then we apply the same force, but in a room of 50 degrees, and now we get 18 ohms. So that means that the gauge read is not reliable, because it will change with the temperature as well, and we don't want that. But if we put this in a Wheatstone bridge together with other resistors that will also change by the temperature, the output won't be affected, because the entire system is affected by the temperature, but only the gauge is affected by the force. So we separated the temperature error from the gauge sensor. We could use this setup with a gauge sensor, a light dependent resistor or a thermistor, so we could measure forces, light or temperature. It is a basic circuit and it is very easy to understand. Ok, so as a short example I've connected a wisdom bridge on my breadboard. And we have two resistors of 100 kilo ohms. Then we have a verba resistor of 200 kilo ohms. And then we have a thermistor that could go up to 200 kilo ohms. Between point C and D I connect my multimeter and I supply the circuit with 10 volts. I rotate the verbal potentiometer till the voltage is 0 volts between point C and D. So right now the bridge is balanced. But now I heat up the thermistor but as you can see the voltage is changing and I could now measure temperature. And the same goes for this LDR or light dependent resistor. Below this video you will find some links to my webpage electronobs.com where you could see all the mathematics step by step, so you could understand more. Also consider supporting my videos on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell for future videos. Also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember that your help on Patreon means a lot for me and will keep this kind of videos going. So thanks again and see you later guys.